the healthiest cucumbers have looked all summer. Hey there, prayer plant girl here. So I came out here with the uh, intention of pulling out my sick, cord looking cucumbers and pulling out this trellis and harvesting some potatoes and uh, kind of freeing up some space here to get some other things planted. <laughs> hey, Buster. But I don't know now. The cucumbers look better than they've looked all summer. So do I leave them and try and get a decent harvest in out of them yet? Or do I just pull them, make it easier to get those potatoes out that I wanted to get out? and start something fresh in here because we are coming up on our average last frost date and these only have like about a month left anyways and if I start now I could get some cool weather crops started down the ground here hmm. but they're actually starting to produce now and looking healthier than they've looked all year hmm. No, oh, the aphids are out here, that's driving me crazy. Uh, I think what I'll do, take off these yellow cucumbers, put this one back up through the trellis, and I'll maybe go, I have some potatoes down on this side of me that I can harvest on this, the inside. There's two raised beds, I know you can't see it right here right now, but two raised beds on one another side of me that this trellis is, uh, kind of going over the walkway between them. So I'll try and get the potatoes out of this side here. There's more potatoes in behind this trellis here. I'll have to reach across, try and get those cleaned out. And just maybe clean up any of these kind of yellow, sickly looking cucumbers. And I'll leave them for a few more weeks, see what they do. I'm not sure what the turnaround, what caused that. Um, but, and I'll maybe just start some of the things I thought I'd start in the ground here. We'll see. I might still be able to fit a few, like, lettuces and greens down in here. Um, and maybe I'll see if I can get some other things started in the greenhouse and that I can transplant later on that are a little bit more cold hardy. And I could just put a hoop with a frost blanket over later on. So I think that's the change of plans today. So I'm going to get some things to just harvest potatoes and we'll go from there. All right, so this, this raised bed over here, it has uh, sangre on one side of it and uh, Violet Queen planted on the other side. And the sangre has been dying back for a while. Now these plants right up close on this side don't look quite as bad, but I think they're, I'm gonna pull a few and see. I think they've been kind of dying back. Uh, they flowered a long time ago. They actually, some of them set seed, which my potatoes don't usually do. Uh, so I think they're, they're ready to come out. We'll pull up a couple hills, see what's happening. This is also the spot where I had marked a couple where I took the flowers off when they started to flower. Because uh, if you remember a video a month ago, I think it was, maybe a month and a half, um, my uncle had been around and said that you should take the flowers off and that's supposed to give you more production on your potatoes. That's something I've never done, my mom's never done. He actually said, uh, he smashes his stomps, his plants right back and just kills the plant as soon as they start to flower. Uh, not something we've ever done. We've always had good potato harvests. But I thought just out of curiosity, I'd take the flowers off of a couple plants. I've marked them with little clips. And we'll see if there's a difference between those couple plants and the other plants in here. It's not super scientific. It's not something I set out to do when I planted these potatoes. And I plant my potatoes pretty close together. So we'll see if we can even tell the difference between plants and how much I'm getting off of them. Uh, we'll just kind of eyeball it. And yeah, other than that, it's 
it's going to be pretty wet in here. I think we've had quite a bit of rain for southern Saskatchewan here in the last week. Uh, between that and me traveling, that's why I was surprised about the cucumbers because I haven't really been out here. I've been, I was away for like a week and a half and then when I got back it's been raining and so I've just been kind of running out quick to do what I can do and going back in and doing canning and things, kind of taking care of some of those indoor jobs. But it's time to take care of the garden and it's beautiful this afternoon, but it did rain most of the morning. So we'll just see what we get here. I brought my wagon out. I think I'll put all the potatoes in there and take them so they can cure a bit afterwards. But we'll just kind of dig these up. What I'm, what I'm going to do is I'll pull the plant up, give it a shake, and then dig around it at the bottom. I think I did take one plant at the very beginning of this row out, but I'll maybe do, it looks like I have two plants that I didn't remove the flowers, and then I have two that I did. So we'll maybe take those four and do a comparison of those. If you're curious, these are little seed pods that fell off the top of the potato. So when you grow potatoes, you actually plant an old potato tuber like you would eat, but they're usually old, kind of wrinkled soft and uh, often sprouting. So those are the ones you plant and that's what gives you the plant. But you can take these little seed pods. I've never done it. I don't know if you need to let them ripen further, but these have fallen off the plant. And uh, there's actually seeds inside and that's how you would get actual uh, seeds, they would have slightly different genetics if there was any cross-pollination, I'm sure. But uh, that's that's where the actual seeds are, so that's when they get you get the flower. These will form afterwards, but like I said, they don't often form in my yard, but many of my potatoes set seed this year. So this actually goes over here. Let's pull this plant up. It's gonna be wet in here. There's the first couple potatoes. These just came off the plant. They're not all that's in here. Lots more. So I may be just damaging all the roots for the cucumbers, but okay, so that looks like all from that plant. <laughs> Not too shabby. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine kind of like medium to large, and then four kind of small to medium. So 13 all together to that plant. Put them in my wagon. We'll do this plant here, and then we'll be on to the ones that I took the flowers off of. So this one did not have the flowers removed that I'm doing right now.
good sized tubers. So you don't have to wait for your plants to be completely died back. As you can see here, you still get pretty good potatoes off of them. appear to be attached to anything else. I'm just trying not to get too close into where this other plant starts. I think I've got all the potatoes off of that plant. Okay, so that plant gave me three fairly large sized potatoes and then had three smaller potatoes here and then I actually had two oop, real tiny little guys there so what did I say I had 13 from the other one we'll say 19 I'm not gonna count these little tiny ones but so 19 off of those two plants that I didn't remove the flowers from. Okay, so now I have these two plants that have little clips on them, and that was what I used to indicate that I had removed the flowers from them. So, take those clips off, put them up the other end of the wagon so I don't forget which, which end I'm working with here. And we'll get these pulled up and, and see what we get out of them. Those are even smaller than, oh, the other one. I'm going to pull both these plants up at once, I think, and just get them out of my way. Going in the right direction. I might need to cut this one. It's going around the water line. It pulls there. So, one so far. Where can I set these? Don't have a good spot. I'm going to set them on the ground here so they're separate from the rest. So I don't have a good spot where the camera's set up that you can see. So you'll see me pull them up. Cucumber, you go up.
Oh golly. Hmm. This is a problem. Okay, this is actually, I think, off of the other plant. I'm not sure, but I kind of figured I had some voles in my yard, and yeah, that's not good. Oh yeah, and this cucumber plant, no. So, the potatoes are growing right underneath the cucumber plants in this spot here. So that could be part of what's been hurting them, and I'm definitely probably ruining the, the cucumber roots. I think that's about as close over as I want to get. I could be taking off this plant right now, I'm not entirely sure. Let's make sure there's no more over here. Okay. Okay, so I'll put them up here so you can see. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, and then five kind of smaller guys. So, slightly smaller harvest off those two plants, but only by a couple of potatoes, which, you know, your potatoes can easily produce that much variation just normally. Oh, that's. Part of why I'm wanting to harvest my potatoes though is because I suspected I have something underground eating some of my plants, so confirmed. Yeah, I like to leave my potatoes in the ground until it's much cooler out, but I think this year they're going to be harvested a lot sooner. Make some open space in here, let the hawks and things that like to fly over my yard have more of a chance of catching any of the mice and voles and things that are hanging out here, but we'll put these potatoes. I'll put them in the other end of the wagon and just let you see the difference so you can, if you want to see the difference in size or anything, but I don't think there's really much difference in what I harvested out of each of these sets of plants here that it's a notable difference. Again, not a scientific little uh, experiment anyways, but just kind of for funsies. So let me get these in the wagon. You can have a look at both of them. That's, this is what had the clips where I'd taken the flowers off, and that is the ones that were just grown way, the way I normally do. So, yeah, four potato difference, similar size variance, not much, not much difference there. So I'm just going to continue cleaning out the potatoes, and I'll show you what I have for harvest in the end. Hopefully, I don't find many more like this.
Well, the harvest seemed to get uh, worse as I went down the row there. Now, there's less sun at that uh, very last spot of the uh, beds. I don't know if that made the difference or not, but I only had one, two, four, five larger potatoes and five medium potatoes, a couple real small potatoes off of those two plants there. So I don't know. Like I said, big variance in anything, and uh, these these three sets of two, I think, show you what a different uh, amount you can get off of each spot. Pretty sure I've ruined all the roots on those uh, cucumbers that I that were planted over the potatoes. I'll leave them for now just to see what happens. But I am curious about. I wasn't going to dig up the rest of the bed of potatoes there, but I think I'm going to just because I found this one, and I'm kind of curious what's going on in the rest of that bed so I'm just gonna get the whole rest of the bed out but the front is now empty of potatoes and I could put some spinach or something there but let's see how active the critters are in here it is humid out here with all that rain we've had The Violet Queen, even their roots are purple. There's some potatoes. When I first built these beds, I lined the bottoms with newspaper, um, cardboard and I think I must be digging down to the bottom and I must not have taken the tape off the cardboard back then. just flipped over this violet queen and I know it's hard to see because they're such dark potatoes but it's just loaded on the bottom they're all attached to the root still now I, these are a long season potato and I'm sure they would get much much larger potatoes on them if I left them but I just really wanted to have a good go through this bed since I found that one that was chewed on and I've seen signs of voles or mice in another part of my garden so I think it's time to just open up the space and make them feel a little less sheltered and comfortable in my garden and I'm going to be cleaning out a few things here just to to try and keep keep the pests away so there I got two four six eight I think I have ten in my hands here and I can still see more hanging off of there so let me put these in my wagon and I'll 
grab some more. There's a good size violet queen. That's a seed that's just dropped in the bed. Oh, there's lots in here. So I could be off of another plant now, but I think I had 13 off of that one plant for sure. And now I need to dig in here because I was just pulling up the plants and I wasn't uh, digging for potatoes right away. I have one stuck on here. These violet queens are so dark. I didn't even notice I had it hooked on my forks right away. They are hard to see, man. Maybe if I didn't have my sunglasses on, but the sun is bright and I try to protect my eyes. <laughs> the only ones I have. Sometimes you'll find something gross like this when you're harvesting your potatoes. Uh, it's just the old seed potato. It's all jelly and mushy and gross inside. That's just because all the energy's gotten used up out of it. And that's what I planted and that's what gave the plant energy to grow and produce new tubers. Ugh, gross, but it produces these so that's okay. digging so deep in the bed that I'm digging up the clay that's underneath my raised bed. So this is the nice, loamy, beautiful soil that I grow my plants in. And this is what I used to garden in. Hard, sticky clay. It's not as bad as it was when I first got here because I put a lot of amendments in it and even just growing on top of it with all the good leaves and things that I put on top. It's all getting worked down through the soil over the years, but it sure is nice to dig in these. I don't normally use a fork or a shovel or anything in these beds. I usually just dig with my hands because it's, it's so light and lofty, but being that A, it's really wet in there, so it's just 
not as pleasant to be digging with my hands, and B, that I obviously have some sort of rodent issue going on in there, so the more I dig up and disturb the soil, the less they're going to want to be in there. So that's part of why I'm going through with my fork. I could dig the tubers out without. It's, it's soft enough. But it's kind of interesting because I haven't dug down this deep in many, many years. Maybe in this bed, maybe not ever, because I'm digging up bits of the cardboard that was underneath this bed to start. But I'm going to keep going, but I just thought that was interesting. Digging in clay, I always seem to wind up breaking these handles on my stuff. At least that was just the, the D handle part and not the actual wood piece. I've snapped a lot of wooden and fiberglass shovel and fork handles in my days. There's my mess of plant stalks that I dug up. I'll have to get those dealt with so we don't encourage creatures to be hanging out in there. And there's the bed. So I took all the potatoes out of that bed. Pretty sure I destroyed all the roots of the cucumbers but they aren't performing well anyways, and I just wanted to get that all dug out because I found that one potato that was chewed on. So let's go have a look at the potatoes. I put them in the shade, and we'll discuss how they did. Wow, I'm out of shape for this weather, I guess. I don't know, I'm sweaty. I don't know what the humidity is out here, but in Saskatchewan, we don't usually have a lot of humidity. 
but it did rain all morning and uh, oh I am sweaty but anyways I got a pretty good haul of potatoes here hey Buster and I thought I'd just bring them over in the shade because I needed that heat yes boss I know I know but I'm really happy with this haul of potatoes here they did quite well um I had noted how many seed potatoes I put in the ground on the stakes here so I had 16 violet queen that I planted and 26 sangre so I only found the one that had been chewed on so I'll be getting rid of that and I don't usually use a garden fork to pull up my potatoes because I don't like to poke my potatoes but somehow I managed to only fork this one and this one here just got just in between the tines just enough to damage it but uh, I'm really happy with these potatoes now um, I'll just need to set them somewhere where they can be out of the sunshine but they can just dry off and that'll help harden up the skins so when you uh, first dig potatoes actually these aren't too bad but often you can just kind of rub like this and and rub the, the skin right off No, yeah, these don't even want to, so they might have already cured a little bit. See so what the, yeah, I don't know if you can see that, that peeled off there. It's harder to tell with the Violet Queen because they're actually purple inside too, I believe. But they, uh, they need to cure for a little bit and that'll just toughen up that skin so that they store better. This will be really nice. I have some nice sized little potatoes. I need to make a potato salad for uh, an event that we're going to this weekend. So some nice little potatoes I can use for that that are different colors. That's always fun, I think, in a potato salad. And yeah, so once they're cured, once they've sat for, I'll probably leave them for about a week. I'll try and spread them out a little bit more than this. I'll probably take this back and put it in my uh, garage just so it's out of the sunshine and out of the direct heat and let them just kind of cure a little bit. I'll be able to wipe the loose, loose soil off of them then once they've dried a little bit so that they're not all mucky. And I won't wash them. I'll just kind of wipe away any loose soil and then I'll just put them in bags to store. Uh, they'll probably go in my basement for the next few months just because that's where it'll be the coolest for them. And then once it cools off outside more, I'll be able to store them in my garage. It's heated, but we just keep it just to kind of keep it from freezing. Ideally, you want to be keeping your potatoes around 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. I think it's 50 to 60 Fahrenheit and that's a good storage temperature. That's, that's what I do with my potatoes and that's what I'm gonna be doing, but I'm really happy. This wasn't what I set out to do today, but uh, it's a nice harvest. Like I said, these could have gone longer. They're a longer, longer maturing time on these potatoes, but I just wanted to dig through that bed and just see what was going on after I found that one that had been chewed on so badly. They actually were pretty good, uh, but now I know. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one, bye.